Okay, so that's general relativity. And what's okay. its friendly neighbor? Like you said, quantum there's two mechanics. theories, quantum mechanics. Right. So quantum mechanics, the, the, the sort of the way that that originated was, one question was, is the world continuous or is it discrete? You know, in ancient Greek times, people have been debating this. People debated it, in, you know, throughout history. Is light made of waves? Is it continuous? Is it discrete? Is it made of particles, corpuscles, whatever? Um, you know, what had become clear in the 1800s is that atoms, that, you know, materials are made of discrete atoms. You know, when you take some water, the water is not a continuous fluid, even though it seems like a continuous fluid to us at our scale. But if you say, let's look at it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller scale, eventually you get down to these, you know, these molecules and then atoms. It's made of discrete things. So the question is sort of how important is this discreteness? Just what's discrete? What's not discrete? Is energy discrete? Is, you know, is it, what's discrete? What's not? And so... Does it have mass? Those kinds of questions. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, there's question. I mean, for example, is mass discrete? Is an interesting question, which is now something we can address. But, but um, you know, what what happened in um, uh, the in in the uh, coming up to the 1920s, there was this kind of mathematical theory developed that could explain certain kinds of discreteness in in particularly in, in features of atoms and so on. And uh, you know, what developed was this mathematical theory. That was the theory, the theory of quantum mechanics, theory of wave functions, Schrodinger's equation, things like this. That's a mathematical theory that allows you to calculate lots of features of the microscopic world, lots of things about how atoms work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the calculations all work just great. The, um, uh, the question of what does it really mean is a complicated question. Now, I mean, to, to just explain a little bit historically, the, you know, the early calculations of things like atoms worked great in the 1920s, 1930s, and so on. There was always a problem there were uh, in quantum field theory, which is a theory of, uh, uh, in quantum mechanics, you're dealing with a certain, number of at a certain number of electrons, and you fix the number of electrons. You say, I'm dealing with a two-electron thing. Um, in quantum field theory, you allow for particles being created and destroyed. So you can emit a photon that didn't exist before. You can absorb a photon, things like that. That's a more complicated, mathematically complicated theory. And it had all kinds of mathematical issues and all kinds of infinities that cropped up. And it was finally figured out more or less how to get rid of those. But there were only certain ways of doing the calculations. And those didn't work for atomic nuclei, among other things. Um, and that led to oh, a lot of development up until the 1960s of alternative ideas for how, how one could understand what was happening in atomic nuclei, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. End result, in the end, the kind of most, quotes obvious mathematical structure of quantum field theory seems to work, although it's mathematically difficult to deal with. But you can calculate all kinds of things. You can calculate to, you know, a dozen decimal places, certain, certain things, you can measure them, it all works, it's all beautiful. Now By you way, say- The underlying fabric is, the model of that particular theory is fields, like you keep saying fields. Uh, is th those are quantum fields. Those are different from classical fields, uh, a field, is something like you say, um, there's like you say, the temperature field in this room. It's like there is a value of temperature at every point around the room. That's some, um, or, or you can say the wind field would be the, the vector direction of the wind at every point. It's continuous. Yes. Field. And it's a, that's a classical field. A quantum field is a much more mathematically elaborate kind of thing. Um, and I should explain that, that one of the pictures of quantum mechanics that's really important is, you know, in classical physics, one believes that sort of definite things happen in the world. You pick up a ball, you throw it, the ball goes in a definite trajectory that's, that has certain equations of motion, it goes in a parabola, whatever else. In quantum mechanics, the picture is definite things don't happen. Instead, sort of what happens is this whole sort of structure of, of all, you know, many different paths being followed and um, we can calculate certain aspects of what happens, certain probabilities of different outcomes and so on. And you say, well, what really happened? What's really going on? What's the sort of, uh, what's the underlying, you know, what's the underlying story? What, how, do we, how do we turn this, this mathematical theory that we can calculate things with into something that we can really understand and have a narrative about? And that's been really, really hard for quantum mechanics. Uh, my, my friend Dick Feynman always used to say, nobody understands quantum mechanics, even though he'd made his you know, whole career out of calculating things about quantum mechanics. Um, and uh, you know, so, so it's a but little- But nevertheless, it's uh, what the quantum field theory is very, uh, 
very accurate at predicting a lot of the physical phenomena. So it works. Yeah. And, but there are things about it, that, you know, it has certain, when we apply it, the standard model of particle physics, for example, we, uh, you know, which we apply to calculate all kinds of things, it works really well. And you say, well, it has certain parameters. It has a whole bunch of parameters, actually. You say, why is the, you know, why does the muon particle exist? Why is it 206 times the mass of the electron? We don't know. No idea. 